megapixels. Should you care? The answer is yes. <laughs> but let's go into some more detail and we'll find out exactly why and we'll put megapixels to the test to see if you can really see the difference. The number one argument I hear against additional megapixels is the 300 DPI argument. Every time we review a new camera with more than 20 megapixels, everybody goes on about how you don't need more than an 8 megapixel camera to make a picture perfect 8x10 print. Let's look at the specific numbers here. This is the chart you always see. 3 megapixel camera will produce a 5x7 print at 300 dpi. 300 dpi, that's 300 dots per inch. People also say pixels per inch, PPI. Same thing in effect. Now, it's, it's 300 dpi because when you hold something really close to your eye, as, as close as most people can focus, that's the maximum amount of detail that they can perceive. So some people can see a little bit more, some people can only see a little bit less, but we've all kind of decided that 300 dpi is the ideal image density for looking at something fairly up close. If you have an 8 megapixel camera, you can make a 300 dpi picture at 8 by 10. If you have a 16 megapixel camera, you can make an 11 by 14 inch picture. And if you have a 54 megapixel camera, you can get all the way up to 20 by 30. However, these numbers are extremely flawed, and I would even argue essentially worthless. But these numbers are, are constantly used to tell people that they don't need more than an 8 megapixel camera, because everybody says, do you really make pictures bigger than 8 by 10s? How often do you? So let's look at the actual statistics here. Here's, here's just the formula for your reference. If you want to figure out how many DPI you will get, take the number of pixels, like the horizontal or vertical pixel, pixels that your camera produces, divide it by 300, and that will tell you how many inches of a print you could make at 300 DPI. So you could take the horizontal re resolution of your picture, divide it by 300, and if it ends up being 10, that means you could make a print that was 10 inches wide. I will caution you, though, that most cameras don't have an aspect ratio that matches the 8 by 10 image. That usually requires an inch to be cut off of both the left and the right. Most APS-C and full-frame cameras require an inch to be cut off. The Micro Four Thirds cameras have a sensor that is more square and more matches the 8 by 10. So let's look at some numbers. This is Sony's A7S, same as the A7S II. It has a 12 megapixel sensor, so it's full frame, but it's very low megapixel. And with a uh, horizontal resolution of uh, 4,240, divide that by 300, you could create a 14-inch print at 300 dpi. This is the very high resolution 50 megapixel Canon 5 DSR with a horizontal resolution of 8,688 pixels at 300 dpi. You could produce an image that was 29 inches across at 300 dpi. But let's put this to the test. What I did was I made the same picture at 300 dpi taken by two different cameras with two different lenses, but they're both 300 dpi. Now, maybe you can't see the difference here, but I showed this to several people and everybody immediately said the top image was sharper, but they're both 300 dpi. And is there anything we really need to do beyond that to disprove this whole theory? If all that mattered was the dpi, then these images should have identical sharpness, but they don't. And this will seem super obvious, but everybody always puts up this argument. There's the lens, right? We do lens sharpness tests all the time. Some lenses are much sharper than others. You could put a sharp lens on your existing camera and you'll get much sharper results. You don't necessarily need more megapixels, but you can also extend this and know that you aren't getting as much detail out of your camera as you possibly could by using basically any lens in the world, you would only reach those DPI numbers if you used an optically perfect lens. So let's talk about perceptual megapixels, because the, the only system I can find for actually measuring the amount of detail that your camera generates, rather than the, the sharpness of the lens or the actual megapixels of the camera, when you combine those two, you get perceptual megapixels. This is not a concept I've come up with. It's a concept that DxO Mark has come up with. And I know DxO Mark, but this is an extremely useful system. And if you want to learn how to use it, go to stp.io slash DxO and you find I have a whole video there that will show you exactly how to understand perceptual megapixels 
but let's take a look at some of their measurements. Now this is the Nikon 18-55 lens. It's the kit lens that you get on your APS-C Nikon cameras. So those cameras all have 24 megapixel sensors, but according to DxOMark, this particular lens produces nine perceptual megapixel images. So here we have, it's producing less than half of the detail that the sensor is capable of producing. And this is consistent with our experiences. We've tested this lens. It's incredibly unsharp. When you put a sharp lens on there, you get much, much better results. But if you back up to this chart that we had earlier, people will be looking at this table here and saying, okay, I have a 24 megapixel camera. That means I can print north of 11 by 14. But when you have that lens attached, you're getting nine perceptual megapixels, assuming there aren't other factors dragging the image quality down further. And that means you're only really going to get clear detail at an 8x10 size. So that changes the math pretty substantially. But let's take a look at a little bit better lens. This is the Otis. This is a very expensive lens. I think it's seven or eight grand. The 85 millimeter f1.4. It's basically the sharpest lens DxO Mark has text tested. If you put it on a 36 megapixel D810, you get 35 <laughs> perceived megapixels out of it. So almost an optically perfect lens. So as you can see, with a 24 megapixel sensor, you might only get nine. But if you put the right lens on something, you can get almost 100% of what your sensor is capable of. Now, we found that as you add more megapixels, even with your existing lenses, you get more detail out of them. Now, what this means is you can't simply think of a lens as being nine perceptual megapixels because you could take that nine perceptual megapixel lens and put it on a 16 megapixel camera and maybe you'd only get seven perceived megapixels out of it. If you put it on a 36 megapixel camera, you might get 11 or 12 perceived megapixels out of it. So there's no simple formula for calculating how sharp a lens is. A lens is not a 36 megapixel lens. The percept perceptual megapixels is the combination of the lens and the camera sensor working together to produce results. The formula that I, I use as a very rough rule of thumb for determining how much additional detail I'll get out of upgrading my camera sensor is the actual megapixel of the sensor, uh, the increase of the megapixels of the sensor, divided by two. So if I were to upgrade from the 22 megapixel, 21 megapixel, 5D Mark III, to the 50 megapixel 5DSR, well, that's giving me an extra 29 megapixels. I could divide that by two, and I, I would arrive at 14 and a half. I could guess that I would get about 14 and a half additional perceived megapixels from the types of lenses that we tend to use. This holds up in a very rough way when we look at lots and lots of different cameras and lens combinations that have been tested. So, yes. If you upgrade to a higher megapixel sensor, you will almost certainly get more detail out of your existing lenses. And yes, you will probably be able to see that even at just 8x10 prints, but certainly at larger prints, because you can't just use that DPI number. Let's look at our favorite all-around lens, the Sigma 24-105 f4. It's not the sharpest lens, but it's much sharper than those other full-frame kit lenses that probably came with your Canon or Nikon. If you put this on a 21 megapixel Canon 5D Mark III, it produces results with about 18 perceived megapixels according to DxOMark. Jump up to the 50 megapixel 5DSR and now you'll get 25 perceived megapixels out of it. So that's not quite 50%, that's maybe like a 45% increase, uh, but uh, com compared to the megapixel jump. So adding more megapixels here definitely gave us more perceived detail out of the same lens. If we use what is essentially the closest we have to an optically perfect lens, the Zeiss Otis, on a 21 megapixel 5D Mark III, it produces 21 perceived megapixels. Put it on a 50 megapixel uh, 5DSR, and we get about 41 perceived megapixels out, out of it. So as you can see, each megapixel didn't add a full megapixel of perceived detail, but it was really close with a perfect lens. The moral of the story is, Adding megapixels will always increase the amount of perceived detail. With low quality lenses, you'll see some small fraction of the additional megapixels in perceived megapixel detail. With high quality lenses, it'll be a much higher percentage. Again, we 
add 10 megapixels, get about five additional perceived megapixels as a rule of thumb. Again, I have a great deal of information about this at stp.io slash DxO. It's just a, a free video that shows you how to use DxO Mark in more detail. I want to quickly talk about crop factor. A lot of people will figure if they have a, a 36 megapixel camera and they put it into 1.5x crop mode, then, well, they'll divide 36 by 1.5 and they'll end up with a 24 megapixel image. That's not the way it works. You need to divide your megapixels by the crop factor squared. So to, to achieve your effective megapixels when you crop an image. So in the case of the D810, which has a 1.5x crop mode, the 36 megapixel sensor produces 16 megapixel images when you have it in that crop mode. Just want to let you know that the crop factor is a linear measurement. Sensor megapixels are, that's a two-dimensional measurement because sensors are two-dimensional. So that's why you have to convert it from a one-dimensional to a two-dimensional unit by squaring it. Now, of course, there are lots of other factors involved in the sharpness of your image than the quality of your lens and the sensor that you have. Uh, there's the anti-aliasing filter, whether or not your sensor has that. But there's also diffraction, which is, uh, comes into play when you use really small apertures, high f-stop numbers. There's atmospheric conditions are huge for those of us who shoot wildlife. Humid days will cut your sharpness way more than a bad lens ever could. Camera shake or motion blur can completely ruin images, and they're, they're almost always present to some extent, dragging your image quality down. As you start to upgrade to higher megapixel cameras, you will start to notice these things far more than you did on low megapixel cameras, and that's been our experience as we switch from the 5D Mark III to the 36 megapixel DA10 to the 50 megapixel 5DSR. All those other things start to become really important. So there, there's something else missing here. Because how could you see, how, how could you ever make an image for a billboard, a big, huge print, if everybody really stuck to this 300 DPI thing? The uh, typical width of a billboard, about 576 inches, that means you would need an image with a horizontal resolution of uh, about 173,000 pixels, or about 20 gigapixels. And there's that, that would be a lot. That's a lot of pixels. <laughs> viewing distance. That's the reason you don't need a 20 gigapixel image to look good on a billboard because you aren't standing 10 inches from it. I've shot many a billboard with my original Canon 10D, which I think was a, a six megapixel camera. They looked great. Everybody was happy with them. You drove through on traffic and you didn't see anything weird. It didn't look pixelated. That's because you're in your car and you're far way away from it. But this is really important as we're taking pictures and putting them up around our house. If you actually think somebody's going to take the picture and hold it at the minimum viewing distance, then you probably want to be at 300 dpi. This kind of happens in galleries. People will hang something on the wall, and in a gallery, people will often step forward and explore the detail. But in your house, especially if you're putting something on a distant wall that might be behind a counter or a table where people wouldn't get close to it, then you don't need to sweat the dpi nearly as much. Here's a quick formula you can use to calculate the amount of like optimal dpi based on the distance. Take the, the number 6870, divide it by the number of inches, and that gives you an approximate DPI. Here I've just put these into a table for you. At two feet away, you probably want to be at around 300 DPI. At five feet, you can be at about 100 DPI, and, and nobody's going to notice or complain. At 10 feet, you can drop all the way to 60 DPI, and at 50 feet, more typical like billboard viewing distances, you can be at 10 DPI. That's that's not much. A 10 DPI image up close would look terrible, but on a billboard, it's just fine. So keep in mind your viewing distance as you're planning it out, especially if you're freaking out about not having 300 DPI for every one of your pictures. Not a big deal. Also, people just aren't that picky. I know uh, a bunch of people are right now writing in the comments, why do you worry so much about sharpness? It's all about technique and blah, blah, blah. I totally agree. Sharpness is not everything, but it is important. If you're a landscape photographer and you travel around the world to get the perfect picture of Machu Picchu, you put a lot of time into it. Maybe you waited until the clouds and the light were just right. We well, don't want to take that picture and have it be less than sharp. You want to line up the technical things before you put all that energy into the really important things, the technique. Sharpness is important. Maybe it's not important to you, but it is an important part of it. Not as important as actual techniques, and that's why, of course, I've written an entire book about it, Stunning Digital Photography. Check it out if you want. 
or just subscribe to see our other free videos, browse our channel, give us a like, share it with your friends, and educate them about what DPI actually means. Maybe they'll choose to buy a, a camera with higher megapixels now that they have a good understanding of it, or maybe they'll just decide that their camera has more than enough with their current lens. Another good option is actually to upgrade your lens, get more sharpness out of your existing megapixels. Thanks.